Welcome back to Cancer Buzz TV. I'm your host, Summer Johnson. On this show, we aim to bring you the news and the latest issues in cancer care you need to know. Today, a business case for supportive care services post-pandemic, critical for cancer programs to help advance health equity and reduce disparities. We take a look at a transportation assistance program developed by Cone Health in Greensboro that identified at-risk patients to improve compliance and outcomes. When their data showed that patients in two zip codes had a 12 and 15 percent no-show rate, they developed this program, and as a result, no-show appointments dropped by half. Here today to tell us about the program is Dr. Matthew Manning. He's the chief of oncology at Cone Health, and Skip Heslop. He's Cone Health's vice president of oncology. Nice to see you both, gentlemen. Dr. Manning, let's start with you. Why did you push this program? Well, thanks, Summer. Appreciate you showcasing this work. Um, you know, each year in the United States, 3.6 million people do not obtain medical care due to transportation issues. And the issues include lack of vehicle access, inadequate infrastructure, long distances that lead to lengthy trips, and also transportation costs. And as a trained radiation oncologist, this is near and dear to my heart. Uh, courses of radiation are typically delivered daily over a series of a week or several weeks. And this creates a big logistical burden for patients, but it's really required to get those treatments on schedule to get the right effect. There are a few studies out there showing that if you miss as many as two radiation treatments, your results are not as good, your survival is not as good. So it was important to us to try to solve this problem because it leads to disparities in care between socioeconomics and even racial disparities in terms of transportation access. So we thought that we wanted to go and meet our patients where they were and provide them with more support. Mr. Hislop, let's turn to you. The award narrative for this program says, quote, innovation requires challenging the status quo. Can you expand upon that? Yeah, and thanks, Summer, for taking the time today. It, it's irony uh, the way this actually started in oncology. Uh, the, the intern that was working on this at Cone Health, uh, I asked our COO at the time, I said, where are we with the transportation program that we're trying to get off the ground? And Dr. Cagle said, uh, she's now our CEO, said, well, you need to, to speak to the intern. So I said, absolutely. I'll set up a meeting. And, and I met with the intern, Rachel, as, as you know, and you mentioned. And, you know, we sat down and Rachel's like, we really don't have anybody in this health system that wants to take the risk to try to get this off the ground. I said, well, what the heck? I mean, in oncology, we tend to have a little bit better financial situation that we can try to be innovative and creative with things. And I said, I will partner with you and let's see what we can do to you know, improve the care to our patients. So truthfully taking risks and then identifying an outcome of, you know, this is where we are right now. This is what the future could bring. And then what we found is that we have a transportation department now that is helping other parts of the health system and actually helping other areas and other patients that aren't necessarily oncology, you know, cardiology and other areas. So it, it truthfully being daring, truthfully trying things that nobody else wants to and and having the support from the senior leaders of the organization. So it, it's been an interesting trip uh, and, and we look forward to what the future holds still. That's fantastic. Dr. Manning, how did you go about getting buy-in from hospital leadership as well as from members of the multidisciplinary cancer care team? Yeah, so I think I think it was widely recognized that this was an opportunity for the health system. Uh, and, you know, our no-show rate in our cancer center was 6%. And if you can imagine having all of your resources ready to go, ready to, to do their work, and they're just twiddling their thumbs 6% of the time, um, that's, that's a tremendous opportunity. And we cut that no-show rate in our four-month pilot to 4% or to 3%. So we cut it in half. And that ROI in terms of now utilizing those resources that are already here and in the building and working, in addition to having patients come in and, and receive the services that their physicians have recommended, there is a return on investment here. Um, and so you can make the argument that while there are costs associated with transportation, 
the the benefit in terms of reducing no show rate and improving service utilization offsets and and probably leads to a positive ROI for the health system in addition to better quality care so in some ways it, it's it's a challenge to get off the ground and get started but i think the play group play, the playbook that Rachel Marquez developed uh, and will present at the ACCC meeting, it kind of walks you through how to do it. Mr. Hislop, also in the award narrative, your program indicated that offering services to patients for free is never simple, of course. How are these transportation services funded and are these funding sources sustainable? There's a lot of compliance to that question. Uh, we spend a lot of time with our attorneys, our compliance team, and the, the free word, we have to be very careful uh, that we cannot advertise. Um, you know, we can't have the billboards up in our competitor's marketplace and say free transportation, things like that. It's really screening patients, screening family members, screening caregivers, screening those that meet the criteria that do need transportation services. So there's, uh, again, the the playbook that Rachel uh, provided that Dr. Manning mentioned. It's really all in there that you have to be very careful from a compliance standpoint to make sure that you're meeting the the needs of the patient and also not overextending yourselves and putting yourselves into a a complicated situation. And the the ROI is absolutely there. um, And it's really more about making sure it's about doing the right thing for the patient. So many times it's, is it a business decision? Is it a healthcare decision? And it's really about at the end of the day, are we doing the right thing for the patients? Um, so as I think about, you know, what the future is, that there's a lot of opportunity for the current transportation program to grow. Uh, we're challenged in our rural markets, you know, in, in Greensboro, North Carolina, it's much more metropolitan. In our rural markets, there's there's not the vendors, there are not the transportation services. So those are the areas that we're challenged on. And, you know, what does that look like? We don't know right now. We're trying to work through that as well. Dr. Manning, COVID-19 brought health equity to the national stage. With this program, you looked at social determinants of health, identified at-risk patients with cancer, and then developed a process for meeting their needs. And that's improving health equity in very real ways. How has your community and your overall health care system responded? Yeah, uh, thanks, Summer. I, you know, I agree that um, 2021, 2020 has really um, put a spotlight on health disparities and racial disparities in healthcare. And the way uh, we structured the transportation services program was to proactively look at patients based on their personal no-show rate history within the health system, um, their zip code, their likelihood of potentially missing appointments. And, you know, so we were able to proactively using some predictive analytic tools, identify who was going to benefit from this service the most. And that did help us close these gaps. And, you know, the zip codes, we have, we serve 28 zip codes uh, in our cancer center. And two of the zip codes were outliers. They were at 12% and 15% no-show rate, as you say, when our overall no-show rate is only 6%. We reduced those 12 and 15% zip codes down to 1.2 and 1.3% no-show rate with this service. So we ended up eliminating the geographic disparity that we saw in our community. And it, it reflects the commitment of Cone Health around diversity, equity, and inclusion, not only in our team members, but also in our community to provide services that that are delivered equitably. One more question, Dr. Manning. Does your healthcare system plan to replicate this success in other areas? Yeah. So, and that's that's something that Skip was alluding to, is that um, it's a very, the math works great in radiation oncology to say, People are not getting their radiation treatments. How can we increase utilization of radiation therapy? The ROI is there. It's easy to prove. It's a good place to start a transportation pilot is in your hospital's radiation oncology division. Once we showed the benefit of it, once we built the infrastructure, once we wrote the playbook, we now have scaled that up. So now it includes pulmonary rehab services. It includes physical therapy. It includes all of the ambulatory services that we now offer to patients that are consecutive days or weekly visits. And so across the health system, we're improving population health and eliminating eliminating disparities. That's great. Mr. Hislop, 
Supportive services like transportation assistance help improve the patient experience, of course, and patient outcomes. But healthcare is a business, and leadership often requires other tangible ROI to invest staff and resources, like Dr. Manning was alluding to. From your perspective, which is the administrator champion, can you speak to ROI? The, it, there's a term that we use in lean management systems called green dollars, which are the actual dollars, and blue dollars, which are dollars that you can't count. They're not physical. They're not tangible. However, what about the patient care that we're providing? What about the quality that we're providing? And we tend to look at decisions that we make with those two lenses that ultimately our goal is to improve patient outcomes. And our goal is to have more survivor days. Uh, Our goal is to have patients that get their treatments completed on time. So again, in in cancer care specifically, as we're talking about, uh, there's no doubt that this is absolutely something, again, that that the patient is right for the patient, something that we need to do. The ROI is not necessarily there, as Dr. Manning mentioned, you know, to get patients to their PCP. Now, the advent of technology and video visits and other things, there's still people that need to be cared for that don't utilize that technology and don't utilize those platforms. So it's really varying degrees and understanding what your business model is, what you're specifically looking at, and then determining what are the outcomes that you can impact. Um, and, you know, is this right for somebody with diabetes? It may or it may not be to get to a primary care physician. These are all things that I think as we move through the process, and Dr. Manning alluded to in other health systems, that these are the things that, you know, statistically data you're going to have to look at and understand one, where do you start? You know, oncology is definitely the place where we said to start. And then where do you spread it from there? What makes the most sense for your health system? That would be that would be my recommendation to anybody. Dr. Manning, from the physician perspective, what are some of the toughest challenges that you had to tackle before you were able to get this program off the ground? You know, w- one of the... Uh... Um, interesting sort of shifts of paradigm around this whole topic is the concept of non-compliant patients. Um, as recently as 2016, you'll see you know published manuscripts that refer to patients missing treatments as being non-compliant patients. And the question is, if you built a 12-foot wall around your cancer center and said people who can't scale the 12-foot wall are non-compliant, and, and it, it, it just is unfair. And so what we, we've shifted away from this term of noncompliance. And that's, that's been a conversation with providers and nurses and clinical team members that it's not the patient's fault if they miss treatments necessarily. It might be our fault for not lowering the wall and not increasing access to our services. So that's been, that's been a little bit of a shift, I think, in a lot of our minds. And I think we're really getting there, which is um, a move forward. Mr. Hislop, close us out. What advice would you give to others looking to implement a similar transportation program? As I mentioned earlier, you know, definitely start with oncology. If you have a, an oncology service line, if you have a large cancer center, that would be the place that you would start. And it's not a one size fits all still. We still give out uh, bus vouchers. We give out taxi vouchers. We have credit cards that we give out for gas. There, you, you mentioned support earlier. That as you think about healthcare disparities, it's not a broad brush stroke. It's very individualized. So those programs that are actually working on things that are utilizing gas cards, bus vouchers, um, it's a multiple of things. So don't think that implementing transportation services is going to eliminate everything else. It diminishes. However, we've got to really screen and understand what are the needs of individuals. So when we talk about personalized medicine, it could be the clinical side, it could be the medical side. It's also the social determinants of healthcare, which is a big word right now. Um, Do people need food and other things? So it's understanding those individuals to give them the best care that they need medically, clinically, and or otherwise. Thank you, Dr. Manning and Mr. Hislop. Cone Health was awarded an ACCC Innovator Award for this program. In its 11th year, the ACCC Innovator Awards provide an opportunity for cancer programs around the country to discover and implement incredible new ways to deliver cost-effective, patient-centered care. This fall at the ACCC 38th National Oncology Conference, Cone Health will be presenting on this program entitled Implementing a Transportation Hub 
a holistic approach to a systemic problem. I'm sure there'll be a lot of interest around that session. This year's conference will be October 20th through the 22nd in Austin, Texas, and you can register on the ACCC website. This video podcast is brought to you by the ACCC Financial Advocacy Network. On behalf of all of us here at Cancer Buzz TV, thank you for watching. I'm Summer Johnson. Thank <laughs> you.